Hello and welcome back to this series of video tutorials on the Carla Simulator. Today we're going to take a comprehensive look at the array of sensors that Carla provides for recording data. Modern autonomous vehicles use an array of different types of sensors in order to interpret their environment and make decisions about next actions. For example, to accelerate or brake, or to avoid another vehicle, or to change a lane or turn. Carla models a number of different types of sensors that are used in modern autonomous vehicles in order to facilitate the production of training data and also testing for a multimodal approach to environment perception. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about those different types of sensors and also show you how to use them through Carla's Python API. Probably the most widely used type of sensor in modern autonomous vehicles is a digital color camera. So Carla provides a model of a digital color camera, but we also have access to certain privileged information because we're simulating everything. We also know what that camera is visualizing. So which parts of the image are vehicles, buildings, pavements, parts of the road, or road signs or traffic signs, for example. And this means that we can provide the semantic ground truth, which is another of Carla's sensors. We not only provide a simulation of a real world sensor, but we also provide access to the ground truth data. And that's exactly what we do with the different types of cameras. Since contemporary autonomous driving research supports a multimodal approach, and there are numerous methods for using things like monocular depth and optical flow, Carla provides an array of different types of cameras in order to support these different multimodal approaches. LiDAR is a laser ranging technique that uses a spinning laser in order to develop a regular pattern of range estimates as a 3D point cloud in order to build up a three-dimensional representation of the vehicle's environment. Radar is also used in modern autonomous vehicles. Its detections are less regular than LiDAR and it's normally used in order to estimate ranges to other obstacles or vehicles or used in applications like vehicle parking. Carla provides models of both LiDAR and radar sensors, and for the LiDAR sensor it also provides the semantic ground truth. Another source of information that autonomous vehicles rely upon is that from navigation systems. The Global Navigation Satellite System consists of a constellation of satellites that allow devices on the surface of the Earth to estimate an accurate latitude and longitude position to understand the position on a map. GNSS is often known in the English speaking world as GPS, but that's specifically the US system and other countries like China and Russia have their own systems known under different names. Carla provides a simulation of this kind of navigation system in order to include this kind of information when you're training or testing your autonomous vehicles. Carla also provides a number of other sources of information with its sensors, such as a model of an inertial measurement unit like an accelerometer. There's also information on collision and obstacles, so you can understand if your virtual vehicle has collided with another vehicle or obstacle within the simulation. There's also an implementation of the Responsibility Sensitive Safety Standard and information on lane invasion. In today's tutorial, we're going to be covering a number of these different types of sensors and showing you how to use them through the Python API. If you followed the previous tutorial, you'll remember that there's some boilerplate code that we need to set Carla up. So firstly, we need to connect the client to the server. Then we also need to set up the world object to give us access to things within the simulation. Then we also need to get the blueprint library and also the spawn points for the map. The next thing is to spawn a new vehicle. So we retrieve the relevant blueprint from the blueprint library and spawn the vehicle using the try spawn actor method. Then we'll also place the spectator behind the vehicle so we can ensure that it's been spawned. The next thing is to spawn a, a sensor. So we're going to spawn a, an RGB camera the first thing is to get the relevant blueprint from the blueprint library for the RGB camera. Then also set up an initial translation to offset the camera from the center of the vehicle. And then we spawn the camera and we attach it to the vehicle using the attach to parameter for the tri-spawn actor method. 
Setting up the initial translation for the camera requires some trial and error. So I'll show you a procedure that can help with that. So we'll add a, a little bit more code to this cell. Um, we need to wait a little bit to make sure that the camera's had time to spawn. And then we can move the spectator so that we can see where the camera ended up and see if it's right for us. And then we also want to destroy the camera each time we do this so we don't end up just adding a whole bunch of cameras to the simulation. So here you can see now I've run that code with a zero offset for the camera. You can see where it ends up if you don't have an appropriate initial translation. So what I'll do now is I'll iterate. So this is above the car now, so that looks like a pretty good position. Although we may want to move it forward. Um, a lot of autonomous vehicles tend to have the cameras placed just above the top of the windscreen. So we'll add an X translation as well. I might choose something like 0.4 and we'll see how that turns out. This looks like a good position now for the camera. So we can now set that as our initial translation when we spawn the camera. Now that we've set up the initial translation, what we will do is to set the camera running and recording data. If you recall from the previous tutorial, we used a Lambda expression calling the image save to disk method in order to save the data directly to the disk. When we run this code, we'll start to find the image data being recorded on the hard disk as standard image files like this. I'm going to stop this camera now um, to avoid recording lots and lots of data. So this would be the appropriate method to record data if you were going to train a neural network offline. So if you were going to train a neural network with a bulk of data that you'd recorded previously. But if you were going to train a neural network online, like for example, with reinforcement learning, or you were developing some kind of VR application for a human user, you might want to stream the data to directly to the, in, the input layer of your neural network, or you might want to stream it to a window so that a user can actually view the data um, in real time and drive the car. Here we're going to use a custom callback that looks like this. So the arguments are an image object and then also an additional dictionary which we're going to store the data in so that we can access it outside of the callback function. So we set the image field of that dictionary to the raw data, um, but because the raw data is like a flattened array, we then have to reshape that into a three-dimensional image with the dimensions of the height of the image and the width of the image, and then a third dimension of size four for the RGB and alpha channels. Now we need to set the camera recording data. First, we'll retrieve a couple of parameters from the camera, the default image width and height using the get attribute method of the camera. Then we'll set up the dictionary to contain the image data and then render it to an external window. Then we'll call the camera listen method with a Lambda function referencing the custom callback to stream the data to an alternate window. Next, I'll set the vehicle running using Carlos Traffic Manager. I'll call the set autopilot method from the vehicle object. So now that I've called that code, you can see that the vehicle has now started moving around the map. Then we're going to set up an open CV window in order to render the data that's coming from the camera sensor. So we just use the named window from the open CV library um, and we will be using the IM show function in order to render the data inside the camera data dictionary. Uh, to the screen so that we can see it live. It's quite simple. We just need to set up an indefinite while loop that will render the data to the window using the IM show method in every iteration. The data rendered is, is the data inside the image field of the camera data dictionary that we set up. We also have a break clause that will break the loop when the user presses the Q key while focused on the OpenCV window. Once the loop has been broken, we also want to shut and destroy the OpenCV window to get rid of it. When we run that code, it will open an OpenCV window that will render the live camera feed coming from the Carla simulator 
into the OpenCV window so that we can see it. Now that we've covered how to stream the data from a single camera to the, the screen, we'll look at the other types of cameras. So there are actually six different types of cameras in Kala. So I'll do the usual thing and connect to the client. Uh, then I'll add some traffic to the simulation. So if you want to look at the different types of camera that are available, you can filter the blueprint library for sensors and then look at the IDs. So here I have the different types of sensor that we can have and you can see them um, categorized as camera or LIDAR or other. Um, so if I specify camera in the filter, I'll get all the different types of camera. So these are all the different types of camera I can set up. So let's now set the traffic off and I'll spawn um, one of each type of camera. So here we've got the initial translation, which we previously talked about. Then I'm going to spawn an RGB, uh, a semantic camera, an instance uh, camera, a depth camera, a dynamic vision sensor, and also an optical flow camera. So I'll just run that code. Then the, the really key thing about the cameras is they have a slightly different way of formatting the data. So each one of them needs a slightly different treatment in the callback. So we've already seen the callback for a standard RGB camera. Um, the semantic camera works very similarly to an RGB camera, but the key consideration is that the semantic camera gives a different integer for each different class of object. So the numbers are actually all quite low. They're in the range 0 to 22, as detailed in the documentation. Those values aren't going to be convenient for visualization because they're too low and the image will appear black. So if you want to visualize it, what you need to do is convert the image using a Kala Cully Converter. So we'll use this Cityscapes palette, which provides good contrast between different types of objects. And then it's the same kind of thing, just store, uh, re reshape the data and then store it in this uh, data dictionary so that we can access it outside the, uh, outside the callback. It's the same thing with the instance camera, actually, that's very similar to the RGB callback. Uh, the depth camera, again, very similar, um, but we need to convert um, for better visualization. We need to, to use the logarithmic depth color converter, which helps the things in the foreground have a little more contrast. Um, when we look at the optical camera and the DVS camera, things get a little different. So this gives a different type of image. So we need to use this get color coded flow method to extract the data from the camera. And then after that, we reshape in the standard way. We also need to ensure that the uh, the alpha channel of that image is set to 255 so that you can see the whole image. And then again, we uh, place things into this data dictionary. The DVS camera is a little trickier. So the, the D dynamic vision sensor basically creates events where there are changes in intensity and the changes in intensity are either positive or negative depending upon whether the intensity in the image has gone up in that area or gone down so it doesn't actually yield a, a, a full image uh, what it does is it yields an array of events so wherever the intensity has changed in the image it will give an event so what we have to do is we have to take this array of events and we have to get the X and Y coordinates and also the polarity of the uh, event. Um, and then we place that into a dictionary. Um, and for every event, uh, we um, find the pixel where that event occurred, color that pixel, and then we do the standard thing again and add it to the data dictionary. So this is a key thing. Each callback has a slightly different treatment for each different type of camera. So the next thing to do is, is similar to the last time, but we have more data to deal with. So we need to extract the image width and image height using the get attribute uh, method. And then the sensor data, we initialize this dictionary with um, fields for each image, and we initialize each of them with an array of zeros, um, which is shaped to accommodate the, the image data. Then we'll use a CV, an OpenCV named window and in this case, what, what this code does here 
is to tile um, this code tiles the this code tiles each each of those image in into a concatenates each of those image into a tiled array so that we can see all the images at the same time and then we use the im show function to visualize all those different different images then we call the camera listen function with and feed in each respective callback for the relevant camera and then inside an indefinite while loop again we tile the images every time and then we visualize this this tiled array um, and if we press the q key uh, then we will stop the cameras and will also destroy the open cv window now if we run that code we'll get this tiled array of images the top row left to right is the rgb camera the semantic segmentation and the instant segmentation lower row left to right is depth dvs and optical flow now we'll take a look at the lidar and radar sensors <clears throat> These are quite different from the cameras since they produce an array of 3D points which you can treat as a point cloud. Um, and in this case, we will visualize them using the open 3D library. Um, we'll also use some color maps from matplotlib. So as per usual, we'll add some traffic to the simulation and get everything moving using the traffic manager. These are just a couple of um, auxiliary um, things that we'll set up. So we set up a couple of color ranges. So we'll color the radar and LIDAR points according to distance and also velocity. So this is the LIDAR callback. So the first thing we have to do is we have to reshape the array according to the number of points. And it's got four columns. So that's X, Y, Z. And the final column is the distance from the detector. Um, we then scale the distance from the detector, so the last column of that array, um, to map it to a color map so that we color things according to how far away from the uh, LiDAR sensor that they are. Um, <clears throat> we then um, extract the, the XYZ coordinates so that we can form a point cloud. Uh, we also uh, reverse the Y axis because there's a difference in the, uh, the y-axis definition between Unreal Engine and Kala. And then we use a, an O3, a O3D um, utility vector to store these points in. And then we will use that outside of, of the function to, to render them. This is the radar callback. So it's different from the LiDAR in that each detection is actually defined by a depth and altitude and an azimuth defined according to the position of the radar sensor. So to calculate X, Y, and Z, we need to do a little geometry. Um, also, each detection has a velocity, and that's the velocity towards or away from the detector. And so we take that velocity and then we scale it to a color map, um, and then we just reformat the points so that we can create a point cloud with the coordinates, the X, Y, Z coordinates, and then also the color according to the velocity. And we have the familiar camera callback just so that we have something to see what's going on in the simulation. Here we're setting up the LiDAR and radar sensors. So you can see that we're using the set attribute function to set up several parameters here. So this is more to aid with visualization for this example than anything else, but you might um, set some of these parameters to better model a particular uh, real world sensor that you're intending to simulate. Um, and then we attach it to the vehicle and we'll also set up a camera so that we can see what's going on. In this case, we're going to use some open 3D functionality in order to visualize the point cloud. Um, and then as usual, we have a dictionary containing the camera data and we use the, uh, the listen function to set the sensors off. We'll use an open CV named window to display the camera data. And then we use the uh, Open3D visualizer in order to display the point clouds. Um, so that's the initialization. And then inside this indefinite while loop, we update the geometry and also update the camera. And then we break it if the user presses Q. Uh, once we've broken it, um, once we've broken the loop, uh, then we destroy the, uh, the windows and also stop all the, uh, the various sensors. 
um, and then we also destroy all the vehicles in the simulation. So if I run that code now, we get a visualization of the point cloud coming from the uh, the LiDAR sensor. So you can see these concentric circles of LiDAR detections. And then you can just about see in front of the vehicle uh, when vehicles are moving, you can also see the, the radar detections, these, these green dots, which represent the radar detections when the vehicle is moving towards or away from another object. So they're less um, regular than the, uh, the, they're more random than the LiDAR detections. Um, and so that's how you visualize the LiDAR in 3D. We'll move now on to the last set of detectors categorized under other. Um, so this would be the GNSS sensor, the inertial measurement unit, the collision sensor, the lane invasion sensor, and the obstacle detector. So it's worth bearing in mind that there are a couple of different ways in which the sensors in Carla work. Some of them, in fact, most of them deliver a consistent stream of data. So for every iteration of the um, simulation, they deliver a data frame like the cameras do. Um, unless, of course, the sensor tick is, is set differently. Um, but there are other types of sensor that are, are event-based. So the collision detector, the lane invasion sensor, and the obstacle sensor are all event-based. So they will only deliver data when a relevant event occurs. So when an obstacle appears in front of the vehicle, when a collision occurs, or when the vehicle, the ego vehicle, changes into another lane and therefore performs a lane invasion. So for that reason, uh, you have to have a slightly different approach when using these different types of sensors. So as usual, we're going to set up the simulation with some traffic and get everything moving. Um, we're going to spawn all the, the sensors. Um, here I've used a couple of parameters for the obstacle detector just to exa exaggerate the obstacle detection radius. And then here we have the callbacks. So we've got the usual camera callback. The GNSS sensor um, delivers a constant stream of data and it delivers latitude and longitude, which are attributes of the, uh, the data that comes fr from that sensor. The inertial measurement unit also delivers a constant stream of data. So we have the gyroscopic data, um, the acceleration and the compass. So these two are in radians, whereas this is in meters per second squared. The lane invasion callback is slightly different because this is an event-based sensor. So when the car crosses into another lane, then this will be fired. And so what we're doing is we're simply using a, a Boolean flag. When we detect that that flag has been set to true, we can then do something. We can put an alert on the screen or something. And it's very similar with the collision uh, sensor. Basically, again, we use a Boolean flag in the data dictionary that we're using to access the data outside of all these callbacks. The obstacle callback is slightly different. So every time the, the obstacle sensor, basically it uses geometry in the simulation. So it, it uses a kind of a, um, a cone in front of the vehicle to detect if there are upcoming obstacles that the vehicle might actually impact if uh, some kind of action isn't taken. And so whenever an obstacle is detected, uh, we can get the, the type ID or we can get the transform. Um, so here we can see that I'm using a conditional statement here. So a lot of what the obstacle detector will detect is actually things that are static, like the road or things on the sidewalk. And we may not want to register all of those obstacle events. So I'm using a conditional clause to filter those out. And I'm just keeping a record of those um, those detections and also the frame that they're in. And then here I'm using some geometry to draw those detections into the camera image so that we can see them. So hopefully when I, when I run this code, we should be able to see some obstacles being detected. Here's some geometrical transformations which you need to project things from the simulation into the camera image. Um, I won't go into that. You can read about that in uh, in other tutorials. And so we just need to have those functions prepared. Um, and then here we have um, the, uh, the the code to start the sensors off. Uh, we're using an OpenCV window for the, um, the visualization. 
Uh, and again, we're setting up the sensor data dictionary so that we have something into which to put all the data and then render it to screen. Um, we also have this draw compass. This is just a little function to draw a compass onto the screen so that we can see the output of the compass in a, in a natural format. And then as per usual, we have the continuous, uh, the indefinite while loop. And here you can see there's a number of uh, different things that we're embedding into the, the image before we display it with OpenCV. So we're putting the latitude and longitude into the image uh, using the put text um, function of, of, C, of OpenCV. Uh, we're also uh, calculating the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration, and uh, using the put text function again. Also for the gyro and the compass, uh, a similar thing. Um, and then we're going to draw the compass as well. So that will be a small line that's going to move around and have a northeast southwest uh, cardinal axis. Then the next thing is the sensor data. If we detect that the the uh, the flag is set to true, um, then we will put a collision um, the word collision onto the screen, um, and then there's there's kind of a counter to make that persist on the screen for more than just a single frame, so that it's not just an instantaneous thing uh, that you might miss if you're watching. Same again with the lane invasion. Um, sensor. So we, we may or may not see these things get triggered. It depends if we actually see um, a lane invasion or a collision. And then as per usual, we're using the IM show function to render everything onto a, an OpenCV window and then having a, a breakout clause with the Q key. And then once we break out, we stop all the sensors and destroy the OpenCV window. So let's see what happens if we run that code. So here we can see all the data that's coming out. So you can see there's an obstacle detection there. The obstacle detector is detecting this car as a potential obstacle that the uh, the, ve the ego vehicle might collide with. And you can see all the data coming from the various sensors here, the latitude and longitude from the GNSS sensor, the acceleration coming from the inertial measurement unit. Uh, we've also got the gyro. So you can see that that's kind of fluctuating. There's a little bit of noise in these and then the, the actual compass value itself in radians, um, which we then do a little bit of geometry with, and uh, we draw out the, um, the compass here on the, on the right-hand side of the screen. That concludes our in-depth look at Carla's sensors. I hope that was useful for you. Please look out for more tutorials in the future on Carla.org. Thank you for joining us.